Hi, welcome to our Watch and Learn. So I'm Kelly Ashton, a studio educator, and here with me is Christina Whitney. She's also a studio, edu studio educator. So today our segment, we're gonna talk about free doodle. motion and doodling. Doodle, doodle, doodle. <laughs> I How had to get that in there once. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> How do we improve our free motion skills and uh, what, what it takes to be, to feel confident at free motion? Yes. Okay. So, um, where do we want to go from here? Well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. So, when I first started quilting, my free motion quilting was very limited. I could stipple. How, how was your free motion quilting when I you I think first I brought started? a sample for you. Okay, this is a little bit, <laughs> this is a little bit, uh, I haven't shown this to anybody before, so what a great place to show it, huh? So, it's going to be recorded forever. When I first got a long arm quilting machine, I had no idea what I was getting into, right? Um, but I have a sister-in-law who had a long arm machine, so she said, I'll come and show you how to do some things. So, here's my very first practice with long arm. Oops. Okay. Be nice, I know, it was my very first one. You are so and hard on yourself, look I at this. I used red thread, and this is kind of just, she was showing me how to get started, because um, all I knew how to do was stipple. And I also heard that there was rules, and that you couldn't like cross Ooh. lines and stuff like that, so yeah. this was a big eye opener for me. You don't want those quilting police to get you. They're mean, just kidding. I haven't met any yet. <laughs> I'm just joking. You're I, probably I'm you're probably your own quilting police because you're yeah. you're just too hard on yourselves, right? So, yep. so <clears throat> anyway, everybody's got to start somewhere, and it doesn't matter what it is in our lives. If you want to be a good ice skater, if you want to be a good baseball player, if you want to be good at piano, what is it that you have to do? Practice. You have to practice, and not just a little bit of practice, but a yeah. lot and consistently. Consistently practice. Yep. So yeah, I've heard. Mary Beth Crapo, one of our educators, she says in all of her classes, 15 minutes a day. If you'll just practice 15 minutes a day, and I agree wholeheartedly, if you could just commit to practicing a little bit every day, your skills would improve drastically. Yep. And yeah. And that 15 minutes a day doesn't have to be on the long arm. No. It can be doodling, drawing out those designs, getting that muscle memory going. Uh, so I, I'm looking over here and I see you've got lots of notes. I've got my little notebook here of, of doodles. doodles. <laughs> I love that word. I have <laughs> notebooks full of doodles and everywhere, everywhere I go I like to doodle. So, And mm -hmm. there's a lot of good tools that you can use for doodling. Um, there's there's uh, apps that you can put on like your tablets or your iPads and stuff like that. They're Even on your phone? Magna doodles. <laughs> My grandkids have those. There's all kinds yeah. of like tools that you can use. But there's, there's nothing quite like a pencil and paper. And I would encourage you to practice on paper and to actually write the date so that you can see that how much you've improved. Because you will improve with practice. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes I'm still pretty hard on myself. I am most of the time on my free motion quilting, but I just have to pull out that good old first time quilter I'm like okay okay I'm getting better at this I yeah. can do this so you see that improvement over yeah. time so let's yeah. talk about um, the doodling so you mentioned it's like it's a muscle memory so mm -hmm. there there are actually motor neural pathways that we follow and once we've followed those pathways it just gets easier it's a smoother pathway it yeah. just it just is easier to follow and so it's really important there's lint weird <laughs> <laughs> floating in front of my eyes. So, but the motor neural pathways are just a really important key to yeah. improving those skills. So drawing and doodling. Do you remember, well, I'm quite a bit older than you are, but we used to have those telephones that were hooked to the wall, right? I had those. <laughs> and we had phone books, those big, thick phone books. Oh yeah. I wish we'd have saved some of ours because ours were full of of drawing. That's all we did is sit there and doodle while we talked on the telephone because we couldn't go very far. So I haven't thought about that. Yeah, it's too bad that we can walk far with our phones now. <laughs> oh. But at least we're getting some exercise. Right? That's right. That's right. All right, let's talk about how we how we started the doodling and, and the ways that'll help us. So 
wh how is it that you prepare yourself for a quilt? Do you doodle specifically for each quilt? I mean, do you have ideas in mind that you're doodling and practicing before you go to the machine to quilt a specific quilt? Yes and no. Okay. So a lot of times I will, if I have time, I will just doodle to doodle. Sometimes I will go on the internet and see a new design that I want to figure out how to do that, and okay. that will be my doodling practice. Okay. If I have a quilt that I've decided what I want to do on it, I will doodle and go through the motion before I will ever stitch it on the quilt. Okay. Just ev even if it's a, a design that I've used many times, yeah. I will still just go through it. Even if it's just my hand moving in the air like I'm doing right now, I will go through those motions before I actually go to the machine. Okay, I, I like to do that too. And I actually like to practice it. So I might draw it on paper a little bit, but I really like to practice it the size I'm going to quilt it because I do a better job taking it from paper to, to quilt if I practice yeah. in the correct size. So um, you want to talk about preview paper? We can talk about preview paper. Okay. So this is our preview paper. And I'll actually bring out this quilt here so we can also see. Okay. I brought lots of fun things here. So this is a Dream Big panel. And the petals are outlined, but nothing else is done yet. Okay. Well, the center's sort of done. So this is preview paper. It's a plastic paper that we can draw on. So I can draw with a dry erase marker. And then if I don't like that design, I can just erase it off and do something else. And if I do it with a Sharpie, it's a little bit more permanent. You can use rubbing alcohol and get it off. Um, but I, I usually just use dry erase when I'm just trying to think of the ideas. Okay. The nice thing about this is that it is going to be drawn to scale. Yes. That's what I like about it is I can, I can yeah. practice the correct size of pebble or the correct size of feather or whatever I'm going to put in that space. So. Yeah. Um, the nice thing about preview paper, it does have this black line along the edges so that you know where the edge is so you don't go off. Yeah. Um, I do have some dry erase markers here. You want one? Yeah. I haven't tested them to see if they actually work. How about we pull that preview paper down a little bit so you... You don't want me to draw on your quilt? Yeah, and this is like folded in half and everything, so it's a little bit wonky. So, okay. we didn't talk about this beforehand. I just thought of it. Okay. Why don't you pick anything in your doodling notebook, just randomly, without even okay. looking. I'll pick something in mine, and we can draw it on one of the petals. Okay. On your right, set, go. Okay. Wait, you didn't look in your doodle thingy. Oh, I have to look. <laughs> <laughs> She's just trying to beat me. That's all there no, is to it. No, because I can't it. even get mine out. <laughs> oh, there's a feather. I've got so I'm many. I'm going to do... Oh, oh, what do I want to do? Okay, let's... Ooh, this looks like a fun one. Oh, how do I do that one? Okay. Okay. This really helps me know if I'm going to like the sizing and the spacing. And so far, I think I might. Ooh, I might be going out of my lines. Oh, I'm having too much this fun. Is, this is much <laughs> more fun doing it with a friend than sitting at home doing it all by myself. Okay. I don't like the size of that, so truthfully, I would re redo that. Hey, that's a fun feather. I should have I oh, done a feather. I, I looked I at the picture, and I didn't take the time to go through the motion before I started drawing, so hopefully I did it. You're, still, right. you're still bitter <laughs> over me beating you changing the foot. <laughs> so you wanted to change You're that faster. faster. <laughs> but so, I love how this works. I mean, it just gives you a really good idea if that's going to work for you. My yep. design didn't work right there, but I mean, and it's to you scale. can't probably see the pedal. The stitch line might not be the same length, depending on what kind yeah. of um, thread you're going to be using, but. I, I just have to fix this. Sorry, it just didn't. You connect. need to get quilting this, Christina. You've I know. Done so so good outlining all the petals. So well, I've just been to trying go. to figure out what I want to put in the petals. But I think what I'm going to do is just go through all of my drawings and just randomly pick. Stuff. That's that's what I did with this one. Is oh, I tried beautiful. to put a different design in each petal, and it's yeah. just a good kind of practice piece. So there's there's a lot to be said with practicing with purpose. 
So um, it's mm -hmm. one thing to practice on a, just a big sheet of muslin, but it's another thing to practice on something that is purposeful. So I think you do your best work when you're practicing on something that, that will count. So yeah. this is a great place to practice your free motion designs because there's like 60 petals. <laughs> you would Six, know, you've done how many on how many you outline. <laughs> this is my first one. <laughs> anywhere between 50 and 60 petals. And by the time you got through that many petals, you would definitely have some more confidence in your free motion. Yeah. And the, the nice thing about this is that it is a s small space. Yeah. So even if it's not perfect, it's not the entire quilt. Yeah. Okay. It's it's you're practicing, you're finishing it. Hopefully, I'll be finishing this one. Yeah. Um, but one thing I did want to point out is that these aren't just squares. Sometimes we, we doodle just shapes. on a square, mm -hmm. but being able to fill those spaces is a technique that you're definitely going to want to perfect. Or I don't like to say perfect because we're not perfect. We're human. We're improving. Yes, improving. We're improving. Um, so a lot of times when I'm doodling. I will give myself a shape, like I'll just draw some really weird random shape and then I go in and I try to fill Ooh, that with Oh, you're challenging yourself to, to yeah. fill those shapes. Yeah, because you don't want to have a feather here and do like, um, I'm going to do just, you know, straight line feathers here. It's not going to fill the space. Yeah. You've got to learn how to get those feathers to reach out and fill everything. That's a good challenge. I like so. it. Okay, let's, I'm going to show you some other things that I <clears throat> kind of doodle with so that I can prepare myself to quilt the quilt. So sometimes, well, Christina said sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't, I'm the same. Sometimes I really am thoughtful into how I quilt things and I, I like to draw them out. You can probably can I move this? Yeah, you can. Are you done with that? Yeah. <clears throat> Get it out so of your way. So sometimes I'm really thoughtful and I, I draw them out. So this, oh. is, this one I just have a picture of the quilt top. And I can just put it right there and practice some ideas. This one is the same quilt top, and I just I drew it out. I just use a, a ruler and I drew it out bigger and tr and tried some ideas like that. Yeah. So those are good for seeing, you know, how it fits the spaces a little bit. Yeah. But then using that preview paper to see it actually to scale, sometimes it yeah. works out differently. I I do this quite a bit. Sometimes I'll even take. Well, this is one. This is actually this quilt right here. So I've shown it before, but I really was trying to be thoughtful with this up. quilt. And so I, because it's a vintage quilt top that we were challenged by Brenda to quilt, and I really wanted to be thoughtful and make an impact on the piecing of this vintage quilt. So, so I actually drew the quilt on paper <laughs> and I even colored it. That was before, I think Christina gave me the idea to take a picture. So, <laughs> hello, thank you modern technology, you're saving all of my colored pencils, but, but there's lots of different ways to kind of come to the same, to, to give yourself some practice and some ideas if you like it before you start. Sometimes I will even take the quilt, like a quilt block, to the copy machine and um, just copy the block and doodle on the, the paper, the mm -hmm. copy, so that I can know if I like the effect that those lines will, will have. But, but so here's another idea going along the lines with that is if you are doing a quilt pattern, most patterns have what the finished quilt, the blocks put together looks like. Yeah. You can just copy that and draw right on that. Or you can put it and in a sheet of, protector. I notice you've got yep, one there. I've got sheet protectors. Am I messing up your order? Nope. So you can Oh, you've even got the actual block in there. Well, this was a kind of a practice piece, but you can you can actually put a block in here or you could put like a photocopy of it or mm -hmm. something and just be able to draw. That's another way to be able to draw yep. it to size. So if you did a photocopy of the actual entire quilt and put it in the sheet protector, it wouldn't be to size, but it's similar to the preview paper where you can erase yes. it if you don't like the, yeah. the idea and redo it. Yeah, I, I can't stress enough how much doodling has has helped me in my quilting journey so it's it just helps gives a visual it helps you learn the path it helps you know where you want to go next so that you're not getting yourself stuck in corners yep there's just so many reasons that that practicing and drawing is important to free motion quilting yeah and along with that is adding new designs 
So we're not just working on one design and making it look better. We're increasing our quilting library. Yes. The, the different designs that we're capable of. Okay, maybe I can do one feather. Okay, I'm going to challenge myself. I want to learn how to do this feather and work on that feather. And then, you know, it doesn't have to be a feather, but just increasing your abilities. Yeah. So looking at your quilt again, uh -huh. when, when you were just showing that, I really liked how you incorporate different designs together. So for instance, here, you've got these wavy lines and then you've got loops filling in. Or here, you've got swirls and pebbles. And just the difference it makes having those two different yeah. elements combined. It gives a, a different look, doesn't it? Yeah. And if you've ever quilted pebbles, I'm just gonna say they're <laughs> quite a commitment. Yes. So anytime I can add another element into pebbles, if you Takes look up at, space. <laughs> look how many pebbles that swirl yeah. fills, you know? So yeah. that saved me from doing like 10 pebbles in that one spot, so. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there's, there's method behind yeah. <laughs> the madness, but. But did you, when you did this, did you just say, okay, I'm gonna do a pebble here and a swirl here, or did you practice doodling and combining the elements together first? I, I, I doodle. I doodle doodle all the time, so. You said doodle doodle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all oh, the time. So. I'm easily amused. <laughs> That's good. So yeah. So try combining two elements together. Try combining three elements together. I like to say and uh, practice. Do something until you do it really well, and then add another element. Add another feature to mm -hmm. it. So so just keep keep trying. Keep drawing. Keep writing. And and just. Have some fun with your quilting, right? Yeah, and if you have a design that you've been doodling and you're not quite confident enough to do it on a regular quilt top, throw on some practice fabric and practice doing the motion on your long arm or your stationary or yeah. domestic machine, whatever you're right. using, and your confidence will definitely increase and your quilting skills will increase as well. Get a notebook, a little notebook, put it in your purse, put it in your car, wherever you are, where you spend your time, and, and, and use that time wisely. Yep. So it's fun. Awesome. So thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and join us again next week for our Watch and Learn. Have fun quilting. <laughs>